posted somewhere so if you want to keep you know eye on things we'll we will let people know thank you for all your support to the family the prayers we they truly appreciate it continue to pray for apostle rosa and tara and josiah and the rest of the kids continue to pray for strength and wisdom pray the holy spirit comforts those who mourn so we thank you lord that is this time of sadness and grief it's also a time of excitement because we know where he went we know what he's doing my girlfriend down in arkansas said gee now he's going to find out if the prophet Cat Carr, who he mentioned several times and had visions of heaven, whether she was right or not. And I thought, that was good. That was good. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's sitting at the feet of Jesus, and we rejoice with him. And we'll go on and, like I say, honor his memory, honor his legacy, and press in and press on. So we're going to take our offering. I don't know what all the offering apps are and all that good stuff. But we want to honor his memory by, this is the first Sunday that we're here. So it's First Fruits Sunday of the new year. And if you brought your offering and your tithe and your first fruit, wonderful. A special blessing on that. We lift it up to the Lord right now and say, bless those first fruits. And if you didn't, well, you know, we get paid every week, every two weeks. And that's our first fruit. We don't have to wait for the corn to come in. We don't have to wait nine months or whatever for the little lambs and calves to be born. We get our first fruits when we get our paychecks. So we honor you, Lord, with all our tithes, our offerings, our first fruits whenever they come in. So let us pray over the offering. Father God, we lift up the offering to you, the tithes, and we say we thank you, Lord, that we have been blessed, that we can be blessings. We give back into the kingdom to do the work, to see souls saved, set free, and delivered. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Nobody else. All right, then. That's okay. This is a song that my father-in-law wrote. One more the title time. Of the song we're is blessed, you keep on we're blessed, blessed, me. we're blessed. Over. All and right. over again. Oh, Come on, y'all. Over and over. Here we go. Glory. Let's try to slap your hands. Come on. Yes, we are blessed beyond all measure. morning I haven't taught in a while and so when I got the word that I was going to teach today it's like oh Lord what am I going to teach all these thoughts flooded my head I could do this I could do that Ooh, I could do this I could do that but I kept coming back to knowing who you are in Christ and then we got the word about apostle and I was like oh Lord now what am I going to preach so just, and he really wants us to know we have to know who we are in Christ because these are going to be crisis times, hard times, trying times, stretching times, good times, but also hard times. So I printed out papers, and I got these off. I just went online and said, who am I in Christ? And boom, we thank God for Joyce Myers and all the work and the study she's done and how she put this out. It's very detailed. If you want to go there, you can get the same paper that we're working out of. I also am going to use a God's Promise book because we also have to know the promises of God. You have to know these deep down in your soul so that when a crisis hits, you're not going, oh, my God, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Oh, how are we going to go on? What happened? Oh, my gosh. No, you're going to go, whoa, okay. I know I am a child of God. I know he is for me and not against me. I know he will bless me coming in and going out, standing up and sitting down, in the field, in the city. You have to know that in your soul so that the word comes out of you. 
the word of God, which is eternal, which can save you, not also from our sins, but save you in the moment. Because what you speak and what you believe is what you're going to get. So, you know, these are some good tools. Of course, we've got the Bible, but it's really big. And when you're mourning, that's why I like the God's Promise books. When you're mourning, gee, mourning, mourning, mourning. What page was that? Is there anything on it? And these are all scriptures. This is all right out of the word. Or comfort. Let's see. Does, does it say anything about comfort? Well, yeah, page 28. Let's see. What does page 28 say? I'll get there. Like I said, I haven't taught in a while, so I'm a little, little rusty. But these are God's words, so, you know, I'm anointed and appointed. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Woo! And I draw on that, and I use that a lot. So then, the first one is 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those who in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves received. Oh, and then Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I know I've been brokenhearted. I know I've been crushed to where I didn't want to live. It was like, that's it, God. I'm done. Forget it. But he comforted me. He picked me up. He wrapped his loving arms around me and encouraged me. And I'm here today. Thank you, Lord. So knowing who you are in Christ, the first one is, oh, I don't have, oh, I do have verses. Colossians 2.10. I am complete in him who is the head over all and authority of every angelic and earthly power. And that's God. I am alive in Christ, Ephesians 2, 5. I am far from opposition and will not live in fear. Amen. Isaiah 54, 14. I am holy and without blame before him in love. Ephesians 1, 4. I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4, 7. Now, I hope you've all experienced that because in the midst of a trying, terrible time, there is peace. When, the car, when you're in a car accident and the paramedic's going, are you okay? Are you all right? Are you sure you're not? And you're just at peace. You're go and you can testify, no, this is the peace of God. I'm at peace. When you get that text or phone call in the middle of the night that says, yeah, Mom, I, I, I'm, I'm going to kill myself pretty soon. I just can't stand living anymore. And you can have peace. You can have a sense of, no, you will live and not die and declare the mighty works of the Lord. Amen. You can have that if you know your word, if you know who you are in Christ, if you know that God is so much for you and not against you. Yes, we have trials, we have troubles, we have an enemy out there trying to kill, steal, and destroy everything and anything we have. Steal our peace, steal our joy, steal our money, steal our contentment. And he brings fear. He brings wants. Well, how come I never get anything? Everybody else gets stuff and I don't ever get anything. You know, he brings frustrations. I just... Why is there never any ice in the ice cube tray? Who keeps taking it all? But that's to steal your peace and to steal your joy and your contentment. And we have to learn that we are overcomers. I have this, have you, oh wait a minute. I am complete in him who is ahead. Oh, that's the same one because I've got two of the first pages. <laughs> all righty. I am born again, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for God's purpose through the living and everlasting word of God, 1 Peter 1.23. I am a new creation in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Now, some of these you've got to study out because it's like, okay, what does that mean? Now, I was saved when I was five, grew up in the church, 
fell away in my teens, through difficult crisis situations, finally cried out to God. But then God is so detailed. He didn't just leave me, okay, go back to what you had. Because what I had, the church I grew up in, got me saved. But then it just kind of left you. Yeah, you're saved, you're going to heaven, and now you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't have sex before marriage. And it was like, well, if I could do all that, what do I need Jesus for? What do I need a Savior? If I could live a good and righteous and holy life, and I couldn't, because I tried, and you know, like I say, fell away. So he took me to, okay, the basics, the very basics. I had to relearn a lot of stuff. Okay, I'm a Christian. Well, what does that mean? Follower Christ, okay, or Christ-like, ooh, well, what's Christ-like? Well, you've got to find out what Christ was like. Give your coat. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Come on, you're asking a lot here, God, but if Jesus could do it, we could do it. Go the extra mile. Do things. A new creation in Christ. Okay, I was this. You know, I smoke, I drank, I did drugs. But I don't do those anymore because Christ didn't. I'm a new creation, a new creature. Oh, man, re, reborn, re, you know, born again. I can be whatever God wants me to be. Then you have to find out, well, God, what do you want me to be? Sometimes he'll tell you. Sometimes it's more subtle, more a working of your circumstances. But you'll know. I mean, I knew before I walked away from the Lord that I was to be a wife and a mother. Now, in my church, there was only one available guy. So then I went out looking. Let me help you, God. Yeah, you know, like Abraham and Sarah. Let me help you, God. <laughs> so, like I said, but in spite of that, in spite of what the enemy wanted or tried to do, here I am today. You know, I would have never thought this. You know, I would have never thought God wanted. But it's also, you have to look back in your family heritage. I had a great-grandfather who was what they call a lay preacher. Okay, well, I didn't know that. And then my dad, he got saved out in California and was off to Bible school, but for some reason got sidetracked. Well, I didn't know that until years, years later. So, you know, there is a heritage, so kind of check your family tree and see, is there any spiritual stuff in my family? A prophet, maybe, maybe a great-grandma who... Always had a word for somebody. Maybe you got a word for somebody else. Or maybe an aunt who just always had dreams. Man, aunt so-and-so had a dream the other night. Maybe you're a seer, you know. You just never know. So what else have we got here? Oh, God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19. Now the key word here is needs. Not wants. But God, I want this. I want that. I want this other. But what do you need? What do you really need? You need a sure foundation, the word of God. You need to be rooted and grounded and know that you know that you know that you're saved, that you're sanctified, you're set free, that you're filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, that you're able to prophesy, you're able to lay hands on the sick. Those are the needs. Food, shelter, clothes. A lot of us, we get off into our wants. But I want a happy marriage. That's a good thing. And it's also a need. But till God brings it around, those husbands are just not coming in <laughs> till he changes their hearts. Now, the Lord showed me that years ago because I was praying to God. God, he just needs to get saved because he's messing my life up. He's making me miserable. And the Lord showed me how selfish and self-centered that was. He needed to get saved because he was dying and going to hell. Oh, man, that broke my heart. I cried. I went to him and apologized for praying selfish prayers. And he's going, okay, that's okay, dear. He had no clue what I was talking about. But, you know, when God opens your eyes and you see some of the self-centered and selfishness things that we get into, how subtle the enemy can be, how slowly he can get in there, Oh, and then we have, I have received the power of the Holy Spirit, and he can do miraculous things through me. I have authority and power over the enemy in this world, Mark 16, 17 through 18. 
Are you using your authority? Are you walking in your power? Now, see, that's one thing to say, yeah, I got all authority over the enemy. But are you using it? Do you take authority? Do you, and I mean little tiny things. When I, before I go out driving, I take authority over the creatures and tell them to stay off the roads. Because I've almost hit birds and geese and rabbits and squirrels and all kind of crazy stuff. And people. And they're a creature. So, and I know this works because I've done that. And you know how geese are. They'll waddle across the road and they will not move. They will not move for nothing till they get across. They just look at you and keep going. You're honking the horn, you're whatever. No, you take authority over them and you remind them, I have authority over you, get off the road. And they, I've had them fly up and off the road. Squirrels, way before I get there, they're gone. They stop, they turn around and go back. And it's, I know it's not because of me, it's the power of God in me. And you have to use that authority for other things in your life. You have to use the authority of, yes, I am anointed to go to work today. I don't want to. I don't like these people. I don't like my job. It's cold out there. I'd rather stay in bed. But I am anointed. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you've got to ask, okay, Christ, if I can do that, if that's true, strengthen me. I need that anointing. I need it to flow through me, to throw through, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm saying, what I'm thinking, even my mind gets me in trouble because I may not, I'm, my mouth is pretty good these days, sometimes. But my mind is like somebody pulls out in front of me and it's real hard to remember. Oh, yes, Lord, pray for them. Yes, I'm going to ask you to open their eyes. No, a lot of times it's, what is the matter with them? Are they stupid? Are they blind? Are they not thinking? And then it's like, oops, sorry. Sorry, Lord. Lord, open their eyes. Let them know they're not the only one in the world, that there's other people around here. Lord, am I invisible today? Well, we take that off. We bind the enemy. So, and then the light of God's truth has shown in my heart and given me knowledge of salvation through Christ. I know that I'm saved. I know that I know that I know that when I die, I'm going to heaven. And I'm going to walk in that salvation. And it's good to do a study on salvation. It's not just you're going to heaven. You're saved from sin, yes. You're saved from death, spiritual death. You're saved from sickness and disease, because that all entered in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned and were put out. I'm saved from those thorns and those thistles that grew up as a result of that. I'm saved from excessive hard labor to get a crop. I'm saved from mental dis you know not being organized from my mind going well i gotta do this i gotta do that i gotta this to do and that to do and this other to do and you just shut down going i don't want to do any of it you're you're saved from depression you're saved from schizophrenia you're saved from a broken heart because hopefully in here it, jesus came to heal the broken hearted so if your heart has ever been broken Loss of a loved one, like we're going through now. Loss of our apostle, our beloved apostle. That broken heart can be healed. The Holy Spirit can comfort those who mourn. But if your heart has been broken and you just think, I can't go on. My husband just left me for another woman, man, whatever, left. I got all this responsibility. Years ago, there was a woman in Naperville. Her husband did that, left her with three kids, big house, all the bills, everything, just left. Well, she gave the kids sleeping pills, and she took them too. The children died. She woke up. She's in prison now, and I know exactly how she felt. Exactly, because I felt that way too. My husband would rather go out drinking, partying, doing whatever. And it, it, that's not the life I wanted to live. I was so despondent. But thank God, you know, we pray for those. And we pray against the spirit of suicide. Because we can take authority over that spirit. And we can bind it. And we can ask God to stay people's hands. Because you hear testimonies time and time again. Yeah, I had the gun in my hand. And I pulled the trigger and it clicked. It misfired. It didn't go off. Or I'm sitting there with the gun. And, gee, this pastor came on TV. 
who is this guy? And I got to watching him, and I got saved. I was going off to shoot my w wife who left me when hit her and her lover. And I found this track on the ground and read it and got saved. God can stay people's hands. So continue to pray for those broken-hearted ones. And then, oh, I am God's workmanship. Woo, glory. Created in Christ to do good works that he has prepared for me to do. Ephesians 2.10. So whenever you feel like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Where am I going? What am I doing? I don't know. Well, you, you could go back to Ephesians 2.10 and say, well, I was created by God, created in his image, and he's prepared me to do good works. And you can ask him, God, what are those good works? Help my neighbor salt their driveway. Reach that roll of paper towels way up high for that little person who can't reach it. To just smile at people. Now, I know we have masks on most of the time, but they can see the twinkle in your eye. They can know that you're, you're smiling at them, that you're giving them some kind of encouragement. You can tell that checkout person at the counter, well, you have a blessed day. Or you can just even just ask them, how is your day going? Take interest in them. Show concern for other people. We can also teach. We can preach. We can lay hands on the sick at work or in the store. We don't have to wait for a specific, okay, we're having a healing service today, so now everybody can come and get healed. No. We can lay hands on ourselves and see ourselves healed and recovered and set free. And then, in all circumstances, I live by faith in God and distinguish, distinguishing all the flaming darts, attacks of the enemy, Ephesians 6, 16. And those attacks are coming. We are not going to live in a rose garden. You know, this is not the Garden of Eden yet. This is not the city of Jerusalem coming down, that heavenly city. So the enemy... Even though he's defeated and we have authority over him, he still will try to knock us down. We are in a warfare, you know. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but with, spirit, with principalities and powers in the heavenlies. So he's coming to attack us. And if he can get you sidetracked, if he can get you depressed and down, he'll do it. If we forget who we are in Christ. If we forget all the promises God's given us, and it's easy to do, we get sidetracked with life. Like I said, bad things, but good things. You know, woo, I got that big bonus. I got that boat. Hallelujah, I'm going to the lake this Sunday because it's the only day I got off, so I got to use it. I mean, God blessed me with it, didn't he? You know, well, okay, once or twice. But, you know, you look back and go, man, I didn't go to church one time this summer. That's how the enemy's slow and slow. He'll bless you with blessings like he did Israel when they got into the land of milk and honey. Well, even before that, when they were leaving Egypt, got all that gold and silver and jewels and the clothes and the tapestries and all that wonderful stuff. They didn't have that as slaves. So they got it when the Egyptians said, here, go, go. Well, what did they do with it? What was the intent that God let them have those blessings? Not to make a golden calf, not to bling out and look good, get on the cover of all the magazines. Woo, look what I got. Look. No, it was to build the temple, to bring the golden, to build the temple, to build the brazen altar and all these wonderful things. But what's the first thing they did with it? Threw it in the fire and made a golden calf because they lost sight of who they were. They kept seeing themselves as slaves in Egypt. Slaves in Egypt. Oh, the garlics and the leeks were better than this manna. Why did you bring us out here in the wilderness to die? We were better off as slaves in Egypt. No, you weren't. Yes, there were hard times. Yes, there were trials. There were difficulties. But to press in, now Joshua and Caleb are some of my heroes. Because they believed God. And they said, we're well able. Let's go now and take that promised land. Come on. We can do it with God's help. 
Well, they still had to wander 40 years with everybody else. But they got their mountain. Caleb got his mountain. Joshua led the armies of God and saw and lived and prospered in the promised land. And that's who I want to be. Yeah, I may have trials. It may take a while. It's taken a few years for my husband to come to the Lord. But praise God, he's there now, and he's believing God, and he's trusting God. And I will see all the promises that God promised me for me and my family. I will see that in Jesus' name. So I thank you, Lord, that we can know who we are. But you have to know that you know that you know that you know. You can't be shaken because the winds of adversity are going to blow. You've got to have your feet on that firm, firm, firm foundation. You can't just kind of go down a little bit. You've got to sink yourself up all the, all the way as far as you can go. But it's up to you. The choice is you. As it, Joshua was, was, you know, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. And look at the blessings he received. Now, like I said, he had trials. He had to deal with somebody stealing stuff and them getting defeated, people dying, and, you know. But still, he saw the blessings of the Lord because he chose, choose you this day to serve the Lord with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, with everything in you because there is blessings in it. There's peace. There's joy. Woo, like a river flowing through us. And at this time, for New Heart Worship Center especially, the questions, well, are we still going to even be here? What's going to happen? What's going to do this? Well, I know this week we're here, and God set that up ahead of time, and we'll be here next week, Brother Kurt. And after that, somebody else will teach, somebody else will preach. We'll move on, unless the Lord does something different. We're here. We do miss Apostle. We do miss you, Apostle. We miss you, Apostle. But New Heart Worship Center is not one person. Because if it is, you know, that's, that's not what he wanted. He taught us. He promoted us to send us out. He lifted us up. He prayed for us to do the works of the kingdom. Not just to come and hear him teach a good word. We did, we learned, and we're using it. We're going to appropriate everything we learned from him. We are not going to walk in fear at this time. We are not. COVID is not going to stop New Heart Worship Center. Death is not going to stop New Heart Worship Center. Insecurities, doubt, reasonings, financial struggles are not going to stop New Heart Worship Center. So people, if you can get here next week, please come. Please come. Show your support. Show your support to the Lord, first and foremost. First and foremost, say, thank you, Lord. You've blessed me. I've come to bless you with my presence today. I'm going to worship you and show you how grateful I am that you brought us through. You brought me through another week. Now, if you're with the Lord next week, woo, glory be to, you know, go praise God with Apostle. Go dance with David. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go dance with David. And sit at the feet of Jesus and just be loved on. So that's about all I have. It's, I know it's short and everything, but, you know, God is good. Does anybody want prayer or need prayer? We'll pray for anybody and anything. So people on Facebook, thank you again for tuning in. And be blessed. Be blessed and encouraged. And know who you are in Christ. Amen.